let's have a look. Now, I was out this evening, uh, so I actually haven't seen the story yet, but I knew we'd be doing a story tonight on Darlene, uh, no, sorry, Darlene Tana, on Wellington and Simeon Brown. It seems that um, Tori Farno came out pretty strong after the meeting going, no, no, he'd, the ideas of a commission was never brought up, never came up, not once. And I'm like, oh, well, this is interesting. Bloody uh, Simeon Big Nuts uh, swinging a bat all week long, a whole bunch of threats, you know, and then – face-to-face -face meeting, uh, she's like, no, nah, it didn't come up once. Let's have a listen to the story all together for the first time from Stuff. The Wellington standoff between Mayor and Minister continues with Tori Fano bringing the fight to the Beehive today. The Mayor was granted her requested meeting with local government Minister Simeon Brown and made her case that the council didn't need government intervention. But Brown told us he's still not convinced. Here's senior political correspondent Jenna Lynch. Walking up. It's funny that um, Brown would tell stuff, but he wouldn't tell um, Fano. Didn't tell her, but told stuff. For the most beltway of political showdowns, the minister versus the Wellington mayor. Today's round beginning with an early morning meeting at the Beehive. Polite, um, and it was very friendly. As friendly as a meeting can be with a government which has called your council a shambles and threatened intervention. Other ministers have referred to our council as a shambles. I would disagree with that. The government began publicly musing about intervening this week after the council dug a fiscal hole hundreds of millions of dollars deep in its long-term plan by yeah. voting. Draft plan, like we said today, draft plan. So mm. as we said yesterday, the the projected budget they had has got a hole in it and they have to fill that hole. It doesn't seem to be a case, if that's it, for, All right, let's get rid of them. If nothing else, they've got till June next year to sort it out. Not to sell off at stake in Wellington Airport. I reiterate that I still don't think we've met the threshold for government intervention. However, I do understand if the Minister has concerns. It's not something we take lightly. Um, they are an elected council. The Mayor requested the meeting. Local Government Minister Simeon Brown didn't come away any more confident in the council. When a council is relitigating you know, an entirety of its long term plan, that could have a significant uh, impact on uh, ratepayers. That is concerning. You still hold the same concerns as you did yesterday? Yeah, well, I think the reality is um, it's a significant change to the long-term plan um, and we're expecting advice shortly. The Minister requested advice on his options on Monday. He's yet to receive it. When that advice comes back, is it a matter of days before you act? Uh, well, look, as I said the other day, we'll receive the advice and then we'll, we'll consider it in terms of what it says. Is an observer the most likely option? Oh, look, I'm not going into any of that. We're waiting on the advice. It's, fu it's funny now they're not going into any of that, Chewy, but they were pretty loose mm -hmm. with their lips earlier in the week. We're going to watch Karen McElnulty and The Bish. Another T-shirt, hashtag The Bish. Karen um, and The Bish. <laughs> and... Um, Kieran made the point, and I don't think we're going to watch this part or else we'll have too much, but Kieran made the point that he wasn't going to comment like these guys did, been talking it up all week long. Rubber hits the road today, and all of a sudden, Simeon Brown's maybe not quite backpedalling, but uh, a bunch of that bravado has potentially uh, lost, been lost and gone away. Is an observer the most likely option? Oh, look, I'm not going into any of that. We're waiting on the advice. And it turns out he didn't go into any of that with the mayor either. He didn't raise uh, uh, the topic of government intervention. Beehive sources have indicated to 3 News that an intervention is more likely than not. That the most likely course of action is appointing an observer to the council and that once that advice comes back, it could happen pretty quickly within the next couple of weeks. Will you challenge that legally? No, I mean, I don't believe we've met the threshold for an observer or commissioner. However, I understand the concerns that have um, occurred as a result of last week. So if he makes a call, you will live with that? I will live with it and I will work um, in good faith with him. A minister and a mere wait for advice that will seal the council's fate. There is another interesting angle from this, Chewy. I'm going to have to go find it because someone messaged me today. So why don't you have a jump in and get your thoughts today, and I'll go find this message that um, that I was sent today. What are your thoughts? Uh, look, I, I think this sounds like an absolute debacle. Like, if the government had a concern, why did they go to stuff first? And why you would mean, they not bring it up hang on, the you, you, you mean the government response is the debacle rather than what's happening at the council? What do you mean? Oh, look, I, I don't think that this this thing with Wellington City Council is like 
an unheard of occurrence that a council doesn't agree or changes something in their draft plan. Now, I've never sat in a council room, and I don't think Simeon Brown has either. Um, but it sounds to me that this was like there was a process that was followed, a, de a de democratic vote was taken, and they're going to tweak their long term plan. I don't yeah. see how this led to a utterly knee jerk straight to the man uh straight to the media uh reaction from the government rather than a phone call to tori Fana or someone going to the council and going hey look guys we have some real concerns you need to get your ducks in a row for the ratepayers so it just seems a bit fucked yeah and the only case that i can think of like didn't didn't um Tauranga's council get replaced with a commissioner that's probably uh, yeah, the most uh, recent example yeah i think that's the most recent and and i in all honesty i haven't looked at the events in Tauranga that led to that happening so i mean that's kind of our yardstick of a government stepping in and going this is a dysfunctional um council um and, and overreach or, or reaching over and saying cool it doesn't matter who people voted for we're getting rid of them we're putting this person in to run your city it's a big step and look i, I don't know if it's the fact that it's the capital city that makes it more of a a reaction for me but it seems crazy that there's a few councillors that disagree like there always is in a council and that that has led to this it seems yeah. out of order we're going to get to more of that with uh karen and the bush because i've got some things to say about there but here's the other thing that came in we most of us will know who gerald uh jared otto is actually i don't know who jared otto is but i i follow him and follow his um his news i'm not entirely sure we'd take this with a grain of salt because i'm not entirely sure you might know what he means by a g newsreader g newsreader uh can nicola willis take over wellington city this is nine hours ago a g newsreader sent this uh, sent me this message. Now this government wants to effectively sack her, Tori Fano. It seems to be led on by Nicola Willis and Nicola La Young. The latter is a councillor and just happens to be Willis's godmother. In case you didn't know, oh. Nicola is also the daughter of Bill Young, who was Muldoon's right-hand man. Her sister is Rosemary Young, married to Max Bradford, an ex-Wellington City Council and failed Wellington mayoralty candidate. Her older sister is Annabelle Young, who was a National List MP. This is a case of Willis endeavouring to take wow. over Wellington City. It's repugnant. I wonder what we can do. Now, I'll say it again. This is, I guess, an accusation or a, or a theory. Um, and we will take it as that. But that's something that's been put out today. Uh, and I, I've seen it in, in the form of a message as well. So... I'm, someone in the chat might be able to tell me what if you know what he means by a G newsreader, a government newsreader. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, what what credibility does a G newsreader? Oh, unless he's saying a Gerald, a Jared newsreader. In oh. other words, ah, oh, so he's doing G news. Is that that's what we're doing? I think that's what we're talking about. He's doing G news. Okay, that'll probably be what it is. So his product's called G news. A G newsreader, not the person's a newsreader like on the radio. That'll be what it is. Mm. Worth it now. Hey, um. Talk, talking about a dysfunctional council, do you remember the trouble that Gore had recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like quite, like that. That was scandal tastic in Gore. They had people protesting outside the the council buildings in in support of of their new very young mayor. Yeah, um, it's funny that that level of disruption, where there were votes of no confidence and there were. Uh, threats of court action against various uh, councillors and that sort of thing. That certainly didn't prompt the the government to to step in and go. Well, hang on, you're not a functional council. Is well, that something it, it, to do with the fact that that Gore is all the way tucked down here and it's <laughs> tiny and it's uh, doesn't have a gr you know a, a green mirror? Um, we can't it, say it, we we can't say it didn't they didn't bring didn't come to their attention. But I think what we can say is they made no noise about it. They probably mm. knew about it. And they certainly didn't uh, threaten a commissioner or install one. And that basically looked like they were about to take pistols at 40 yards, you know. So, yeah, that point's made by by um, Karen and the Bush, Karen to the Bush mm -hmm. this morning as well. Because Karen, remember, Karen was the local um, local government minister, is that what it's called? So he was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was down with all of that. He was down. Yeah, just so it just seems... It, 
I still, I, I want to know, Simeon, come on and talk to us <laughs> again, because we've got lollipops. Um, because if all it is, did I just spoil it? Sorry. If all it is, right, is they need to figure out this new budget because of a democratic process, I don't see how anyone could say that's the shambles and they should be replaced. Unless, here's the conspiracy theory, but you know Occam's razor, right? People talk about Occam's razor as the most logical conclusion is more often than not the right conclusion. The better way, the actual way of thinking about it is it's the fewest number of assumptions to get to the outcome. And Occam's razor would say this to me. It would say, they're making such a big deal over this in Wellington when it seems from the outside that all they're talking about is having to rework their budget, that there's something more to it. I mean, mm. because they're talking money, is it something to do with government lacking in money? Were they needing to see this money come in? There was like a triangle going on or something. Because because the, uh, the amount of pushback the government is giving doesn't fit the problem that they're looking at, which seems to be we've got eight months to rework our budget. And if we don't rework our budget, come and see us about a commissioner in eight months. That's how it feels to mm -hmm. me, at least. Yeah, I would I, I would agree. Look, there's, there's no arguing about the importance of government looking out for, for ratepayers as well. But they are an emergency measure yeah. at that point. Yeah. Councillors and councils are responsible to the people that voted them and the ratepayers and that sort of thing. I don't expect central government to come in and replace the people that were voted for unless it's utterly irredeemable. Be because what you're doing is you're overriding the democratic process because things are that bad. And at the moment, it doesn't feel like things are that bad to basically what you're doing, government, is you're going... All of those uh, taxpayers, ratepayers, citizens of Wellington who voted, we're going to nullify your votes because that's how bad it is to put in a commissioner or a board or something else. Um, well, and, and that doesn't feel like I have, okay, put it this way. I have yet to see the evidence that warrants such a serious step in the democratic process. Could it be because the issues that Wellington are dealing with shine a light on some things that are wrong at a national level yeah well it's something like they have huge problems with their pipes they have huge problems with dealing with the effects of a, a potential earthquake with insurance they have the, the you know it just shines a light on the issues that local government has to deal with some of these sort of things that the only way that they have to raise money to do their plans is to sell assets or raise rates they yeah. have no other options. Mm. This is something that every council in the country is talking about. This is a huge part, a massively overlooked part of what Three Waters was about. It was about letting local governments borrow against their long-term assets to fund yeah. further development. Yeah. And we, like this country, ignored all of that and went... What do you mean the Maoris get a say? And we, we, the royal we, this whole country, lost their fucking minds. And we've got people that live in the country that this doesn't concern at all putting up signs about being against tribal rule and driving their tractors into town. It was just a shit show. But um, this is what we get. And this is why the government is not happy with it because it, it provokes conversations like this. Whose fault is it? I uh, I think Brother Monk wins the comment of the week, uh, talking of Simeon Brown. Bit hard to throw your weight around when you haven't gone through puberty. Well, that's a that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good. That's very funny. That's a pretty good. Do one. I need to find the picture again, Pat? My favorite. You know picture. what I'm? Do you know what I'm already thinking? That's going to be a T-shirt. It's going to be a characterization of him with a lollipop in the back of dad's car. I think that's going to be one. Code brown underneath. Oh.